With several ghost slash demon movies coming out recently, I started thinking about that subgenre in general. I mean, I think it has to be the scariest subgenre of horror for me personally. I mean, there's just something about this other parallel world that lives just beyond ours that I find truly terrifying. Anyway, I mean, that got me thinking of some of the ones that I really enjoyed over the last few years. And if you're a horror fan at all, we've really been spoiled over the last decade. I feel like around 2015 is when horror really started to take a clear turn away from the 90s horror resurgence that happened, where it was a, a lot of pretty characters getting killed in just kind of different or interesting ways. And it started to shift to the horror roots of like the 60s and 70s, where it was a lot of character and story front and center. And atmosphere was king. This sort of blending of horror from that time period with a modern flair has really put us in a great time for horror movies. And so because of this, I decided to just kind of go back to 2015 to present as my arbitrary cutoff dates. And just for the record, when I say like ghost demon, I decided to kind of separate this from just witchcraft. I feel like witchcraft is like a different subgenre and can kind of have a list all on its own. So I tried to stick with movies about entities, ghosts, or just demons. I mean, listen, I love The Witch and Hereditary, but I felt both were maybe more witchcraft films. So if you wonder why they aren't on this list, uh, that's why. But here is my top six ghost demon movies that ended up being released in the last six years, six months. Number six, A Dark Song. I did a movie recently called From Black, and although I thought that movie did a lot of things really well, this movie is a much better version of that story. This movie really utilizes its low-budget horror element to maximize the premise. It's about a woman who lost her son and hires a man versed in the occult to perform this very specific ritual so that she has a chance to speak to him again. It's a rough marathon set of events that she has to endure, and the story does a great job of revealing more and more about her overall motive as they begin to descend level by level down this rabbit hole of a ritual. Moody, tense, atmospheric, disturbing, primarily all just one single location. The two lead actors in the whole film both give fantastic performances and give the overall movie such gravitas. Number five, Ouija, Origin of Evil. This movie really surprised me because the original Ouija movie was kind of dumb. And so when I heard that they did a prequel, I thought, oh boy, like this is going to be just a typical horror IP that we're just going to drive into the ground until it can no longer get any more money. But then I heard that Mike Flanagan directed it, and I was intrigued. At the time, he was coming off of Oculus and Hush, which I loved Oculus, and I, I liked Hush, but he showed me enough there where I was really on board for whatever he did next. However, the traditional modus operandi in up-and-coming directors is that you start getting sort of hired into bigger projects that you have less control over, and then you have to cut your teeth on these sort of so-so movies. And so I thought for sure Origin of Evil was going to be his. How wrong I was. I found he was able to bring his character-driven style to this movie and really keep the atmosphere and tone steady and chilling in this family drama about a, a group of fake spiritualists who end up having to deal with a real spirit. It's patient, it has great character work, and genuinely scary moments that far surpass the original. Number four, The Empty Man. What I loved about this movie is how it takes a very tropey style idea about a cheesy urban legend and dives into it in a very serious and emotional way. I remember watching the trailer for this movie and it really leans on the, well, if you walk over a bridge and do these things, the empty man will come for you. And it just looked stupid. But then I saw it was two hours and 20 minutes long. And I was like, that just does not add up. The trailer really does not do this movie justice. Because this movie is a slow and twisting tale starring one of my favorite actors, James Badge Dale. As he tries to piece together a series of crazy deaths that are linked to an urban myth. As he digs in, he gets dragged deeper and deeper into a world he doesn't understand and becomes a target himself. 
The movie's probably a little longer than it should be, but the slower pace really does amp up the tension and the vibe and has some truly creepy visuals and scenes that'll stay with you long after the movie. Number three, The Autopsy of Jane Doe. <laughs> You'll probably notice uh, a bit of a theme with a lot of these movies, but what I love about horror movies is the simple stories that can really come at you hard. This movie's about two morticians that get a strange Jane Doe one stormy night and have to piece together what happened to her. But it is such a masterclass in setting and tension. A quiet basement, two characters, one dead body, a storm rolling in outside, and just a heap ton of subtle atmospheric horror. As this investigation continues and more and more shocking things about this Jane Doe get revealed, more questions begin to pop up on how this girl got the way that she did. They then begin to start experiencing these like visions and strange things and they start terrorizing them as the storm ends up trapping them inside. This movie is just two powerhouse actors in Emile Hirsch and Brian Cox giving it such a great grounded presence and really sell the horrors as they unfold around them. Okay, uh, to my opening statement, technically this movie could be considered witchcraft and I get that, but it just felt a little bit more of an entity slash demon to me than straight up witchcraft. Number two, wounds. This movie could be summed up for me in one word unsettling. The weird thing is there is almost nothing in this movie that is overly gross, but the, just the overall vibe of the film and the feeling is just this constant sense of uncomfortability. It's like the entire movie is covered in this thin layer of invisible grime that you can feel but you can't see. This movie also takes a very clever approach to showing the audience uh, a very shoddy kind of Bloomhouse curse movie, and then ends up being adjacent to that and telling a much darker, more personal story about this bartender who kind of gets caught up in this curse because he just happens to be at the wrong place in the wrong time. Now, I know a lot of times the word Lovecraftian kind of gets thrown around a bit too much in the horror world, but that is a perfect description for this movie. It's a movie that teases this dark void that lives just beyond our own and in a way that is less over the top and loud and more having to come to terms with a truly horrific reality. Number one, Black Coat's Daughter slash February. I don't know why this movie seems to have two titles. It came out as Black Coat's Daughter, but it's listed on IMDb as February. I don't know what the story is behind that, but it really doesn't matter. This is the quintessential movie of more for less. It is a culmination of everything I love about horror movies. It's visuals, it's atmosphere, it's growing sense of tension and dread. And yeah, there is some gore and blood, but really where this movie shines is in what you don't see. It's a small story about a girl who's left behind for holiday vacation at her school. If you're looking for an over-the-top chasing scene with the main characters running around trying to figure out who or what is after them or trying to fight some sort of demon, this one is not for you. This is a slow and patient and creepy as hell film that will very slowly work its way under your skin over the course of the film, which is to say the best kind of film. So that's my list. Uh, let me know what you think about that, or let me know what you think would be some of your favorite movies in the last couple years in this genre.